I'm here to answer the most common questions about spinal cord injuries. Today, we're starting with the basics, so stick around. When people talk about spinal cord injuries, you hear, probably hear a lot of numbers and a lot of letters. Well, we're gonna talk a little bit about what all of that means today. So there's four different areas or regions of the spine where spinal cord injury can occur. And those four regions are the cervical area, which is the neck, the thoracic, which is the chest area, lumbar, lower back, and then the sacral region, which is down by the tailbone. Well, I have a C6-7 spinal cord injury. What that means is that my injury occurred at the sixth and seventh vertebra within the cervical region. There are seven vertebra in the cervical region, although there's eight nerves. So that gets a little complicated. And there's 10 vertebra in the thoracic region. In the lumbar, there's five. And then in the sacral region, there are five as well. So yes, I think I did all that right. In addition to hearing the numbers and the letters, you might hear someone being referred to as a quadriplegic or a paraplegic. And basically the difference between a quad and a para is where the injury has occurred and what limbs are affected. A quadriplegic is someone whose all four limbs are affected. So I am a quadriplegic, but I can hear you saying, but Jenny, you have use of your arms. Yes, that's true but all four limbs are affected. So I can't use my hands, I have quadly hands. And because my spinal cord injury occurred in the cervical region, I'm a quadriplegic. Yes, I have had medical professionals try to convince me I'm a paraplegic. A paraplegic is the other, so typically paras will have function, um, full function of their arms. You can hear quad and para but you might also hear the term tetraplegic. So sometime within the past 10 or 15 years, the medical community has decided to change terminology from quadriplegic to tetraplegic. And I guess because someone, when they were coming up with these terms, decided to use a mixture of Greek and Latin. So they've moved from saying quadriplegic to tetra because tetra is in Greek, and so is para or maybe I have that mixed up. Either way, they wanted to get it both in the same language, and so now you have quadriplegic, tetraplegic, and paraplegic, two of those meaning quad or tetras. So there you go. In addition to talking about the level of a spinal cord injury, you'll hear if someone has a complete injury or an incomplete injury. And a, a, this is a bit outdated and there's a better system, and we'll talk about that in just a second, of classifying spinal cord injuries. But basically, someone with a complete spinal cord injury will have no feeling or function from their injury down. So for example, I have no feeling and no function from my chest down. An incomplete injury is when someone has feeling or function below their level of injury. So I know people who have full feeling, but they're completely paralyzed. Or the opposite can be true. Someone can have function, but no feeling. Because of the confusing nature of describing complete and incomplete, that in 1992, the medical community came up with the Asia scale. And basically, this grades a spinal cord injury, you could say. And so a complete injury, by my definition of no feeling or function below the level of injury, would be an Asia A. So that means no sensory and no motor function below the level of injury. So no feeling, no function. An Asia B might have feeling, but the true test of an Asia B comes when a physical therapist or a doctor will take a gloved and lubricated finger and put it up the rectum and see if you can either squeeze or if there's a reflex. If that is, if there is, then you're an Asia B. So Asia Bs w might possibly have feeling below their injury, but they will not have function, but they will have this reflex. So 
the Asia scale goes all the way from A to E, E being absolutely no sign of neurological deficit. But C and D, um, it gets a little bit more confusing. Basically, people will have some feeling or some function. Because of the different levels and severity of a spinal cord injury, you can have two spinal cord injuries at the same level and they're not going to look alike. So the really important thing that I want to get across is that no two spinal cord injuries are alike. I want to give this example of putting myself and Tom side by side. In this picture, you can see me in all my glory of quadliness. You can see the atrophy in my arms and just see that I don't have full function and full use of my arms. On the other picture with Tom, what can I say? Just look at those guns. I mean, he is the same level injury that I have. His injury was at the sixth and seventh cervical vertebrae. And yet we have such different outcomes with our spinal cord injuries. That's because I have an Asia A spinal cord injury and Tom has an Asia C. So he has function below his level of injury. As you can see, I have absolutely no use of my hands and I use a gripping aid called active hands in order to row. And Tom is using his own strength to do these pull-ups. This is just a really good visual and a really good reminder that no two injuries are the same. Today, we've talked about the different regions in which you can have a spinal cord injury, the terminology, cervical, thoracic, sacral and lumbar, complete versus incomplete, as well as the Asia scale. I hope this has been helpful today. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I will have more of these episodes coming up about what you want to know about spinal cord injuries. Until next time.